God bless y'all, man. It's your brother, the God Hop MC. Welcome. Y'all know what time it is, man. It's Sunday evening. Not evening, evening. <laughs> Yo, salute, salute to uh, the YouTube family and the Facebook family. Let me just tap in right quick and see what's going on. I appreciate those of you who are tuning in at this time. Um, let me see what we got going on here. Who we got? Who we got? Okay. I see people starting to say hello and what's up. A salute, salute, faithful sister and Yah. Shalom, shalom. Thank you. God bless you. Mark Daniels was good, family. Grace and peace to you as well. Alec Laptop, what up? What up? Dale Harewood, salute, King. Shalom, shalom. Sister Just Souls, shalom to you, sis. My brother, my brother, Akish was popping with you, bro. God bless. T tapping in from Facebook. That's Dale and I catch tapping in from Facebook. Rob T, salute family. God bless you. I appreciate y'all. That's what's up. That's what's up, bro. See, you can go either way. You feel me? Candace, Candace, Candace. What up, sis? God bless you. Hello, hello, hello. Alejandro, what's good with you? <laughs> ah, my niece. What up, girl? Love you too. What's up? What's up? 
tap it in. Hopefully you stay around and learn something. <laughs> ah, love you too. That's my niece right there. Sister Wanda Watkins, what's going on? God bless y'all. For those of you who are actually on Facebook, y'all know what's up, right? I need y'all to take them fingers, y'all know, grab them phones. If they, if y'all on phones, y'all could be watching on Facebook through a laptop, something. But anyway, take them fingers or them mouse cursors and go ahead and hit them thumbs up and hit them hearts for your man so that the kid algorithm can be up there. So more people who are in my friends list can see it on their timelines or their feeds. Um, for those of you who are tuning in through YouTube, salute to you. The most you can do to help out or the least you can do is hit that thumb up button. If you hit the thumbs down, I ain't hating, but I would prefer you hit that thumbs up button. And if you're not a subscriber and you're on my YouTube, I ask that you would subscribe and hit that notification bell so that when I come on live, because these are kind of more or less on a timeline, but sometimes I may come on random. Like I came on yesterday afternoon about four o'clock, really unannounced. And some people was like, yo, I didn't know you was going to come on on Saturday. If I have time, y'all, I like to do a little bit extra. Um, That's what's up. Uh, more people coming in. So salute to y'all. Hugh Holler was good. King, God bless you, bro. And Paro, how are you, Queen? How are you? Sister Misty, what's going on, sis? Bless you. Hagios, salute, salute, shalom. So, yo, check this out, man. Uh, we're going to get into this. And what I'm going to do, hold on, where's my banner? There it is. Y'all see that ticker? As we get started, y'all know what it is, man. If you would like to support the ministry financially in any way, your ones and twos matter. Even if you give silver coinage, we accept all limbs. You feel me? That ticker right there at the bottom of the screen actually gives you my contact information. Like if you got questions or want to reach out through uh, uh, my email. But then also, if you want to leave a donation, the cash app is right there. Um, right here. If, well, if you're on YouTube, right in on YouTube, you can hit me through the super chat or you can hit my PayPal. And when you go to PayPal or cash app, if it says Joseph Diggs, that is me. That's my government name. Zadok is my surname that was given to me about 20 years ago, but my mama named me Joseph. So that is me too. Some people was like, yo, I was, yo, I went and I seen this. Is that you? Yeah, that's me. <laughs> So salute to y'all. God bless y'all. I appreciate people coming on up in here. Uh, who else we got popping up in here? Salute. What up, brother Hashem? What it is? What it is? What up, Greg? <laughs> Why were we thumbs up before we know what the content is? Hey, Greg, I don't know. I, it, people know me. So if you know me, thumbs up it. You feel what I'm saying? And if you don't know me, then yeah, you should wait. But I'm letting you know to do that. You ain't got to do it right away. You know what I mean? You can stick around and find out what's up. Um, but salute. Welcome. Uh, Brother Wettstein, what's popping? What's popping? <laughs> That's right, Sister Faithful. That's right. But I think Greg is on YouTube. So all he could do is give a thumbs up. You, Those of you who are on Facebook, y'all can hit a whole bunch of thumbs up and hearts and stuff. Uh, Sister Cassandra Bowens, welcome. Salute, bless you, thank you. And and, and and thank those of you who actually have sown into the ministry. Y'all helping us out a lot with some of the stuff that we got going on and what we're trying to do. So I definitely, definitely uh, appreciate it. And um, what I do want to do is, just so that you ladies and gentlemen know what's up, I, I, I got something free I'm, I'm, I'm giving away. Y'all know that I have merchandise, right? I got young merchandise. And this right here, this shirt, y'all see what that shirt says? It says blood bought. Y'all see it? It looks like a receipt. You know how the scripture says that we are brought with a price? So y'all see up there, the date is AD 33. <laughs> Items. What was purchased? The church. All creation. What was the price paid? The blood of the lamb. What do you get back in return as change eternal life? It's like a receipt. Y'all see that? Y'all see that blood bought joint? So what I'm doing is this is one of my lines. Um, I'm going to give this away. Um, this right here, what size is this? This is an extra large, but I got an extra large joint and I have a medium, but I'm only giving away one of them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say tonight, whoever is the one, two, three, four, five, whoever is the seventh person that leaves any kind of donation, I'm not going to tell you what the value of the shirt is, what, what, what I sell it for when I'm on the road and doing this, that, and the third. It really doesn't matter. Sometimes we give these shirts to people for no cost if they want one. So what I'm going to say is the seventh person tonight 
that leaves a donation. So if you leave a donation and then I see it, or what you got to do is you leave a donation and you hit my, y'all see right there, it says contacts to Gmail, Y-A-B-O-Y-Z-A-Y-D, okay? That's my Gmail because some people leave, um, they, they'll give a donation in the super chat. And then some people actually hit hit me through PayPal or through Cash App. So just because you leave a donation through Super Chat doesn't mean that you'll be that person per se, because not all donations appear right on YouTube. So what I'm going to say is if you decide to give a donation, that's up to you. If not, that's fine, too. But if you give one, immediately hit that email address and say, hey, Zay, I sent. And when I look at and I'm going to check my be checking my emails while I'm on here real time, I will announce who the person is who was the seventh person to donate and who was uh who confirmed it in the email address you won't know your seventh but when i look at the emails whoever is the seventh email that i get confirming hey bro i i, I sold a seed yo send me that thing that's what's up so right here once again hey peace out brother greg y'all see this y'all see this person right here i don't know who this person is he said money changers in the temple but he probably buy Christian books and everything. He probably buy Bibles. He probably go to church and give the offerings when they ask and all that. Who, who, where do you get these people from? Money changers in the temple. First of all, we ain't in the temple and I ain't no banker. Y'all know me. So check this out. For those who are actually interested, y'all see what's up. Y'all see what's up. The blood bought joint. I have an extra large or medium. So if you do decide that you want to uh, get in the, the runnings, if you will, understand I can only send an extra large or a medium. And so that, and I'm only sending one. I'm not sending out two shirts. It's just that if you send, let me know, hey, I want that extra large or that medium. And we'll see what happens. Who knows? People may not want to give like that. And that shirt might sit right there. You know, It don't really matter. It's just a way for me to come up with ways to give to the people who are, for the most part, giving to me in this ministry mission that i'm on I, I don't take that lightly so i'll be figuring like yo people give stuff and how can i every time somebody gives something i can't necessarily just send everybody something so i'm like you know what well this is worth this much so guess what that shirt has a, a is worth something you might be like yo hey i gave five dollars <laughs> Y'all see what I'm saying? I might actually like, yo, that shirt, that shirt is worth way more than five bucks. But if your donation was five bucks and you was the seventh person, you get that shirt. It's really that simple. And guess what? It might cost me five dollars to put that in the mail in priority mail and send it to you. So people think it's all about profit. It's not. It's a way to say thank you. And it's a way to gain more support. So with that being the case, look, you already know what it is. The dojo is open. It's your brothers that I've been Israel, a.k.a. the God Hop MC, hashtag just the best of nobody special, a.k.a. Young Chimney in the building. So come on in because the doors are open. Take your shoes off. Make sure your sock game is on point and get your warm up cotters on because it's about to get biblical. Hey, salute, salute. What up, brother Brendan? I see you popped up in here. What up, brother Bowman? Salute, salute. William, what it is, Brother Smithers? Brother Smithers was popping. <laughs> Christian Perez, salute, salute. God bless, God bless. So check this out, everyone. We are about to get into a presentation tonight, and I pray that it's going to be an edifying one. Uh, what I want to put on the table tonight to you all is a study that I did some time ago. It's not new, um, but I thought that it was fitting. As we are looking at the things that are happening in our society, Lindsay Buckle, Shalom, Shalom, thanks for coming in. What up, Yamiel? What up, Yamiel? Salute, salute. Shaft of Berean. Yo, what's good, Shaft? Peace, King. God bless you. Brother Dell, salute. God bless you. So that's one. That's two right there. I salute y'all. Thank y'all, brothers, because believe me. I don't take for granted that people are willing to do what people are willing to do. So with that being the case, what I want to put on the table tonight is a presentation that I like to call Thorns and Snares. Salute, Mama G. How you doing? How you doing? This, this presentation, brothers and sisters, salute, JT. This presentation is called 
thorns and snares. And it's based on Christ's parable of the sower. I'm not dealing with every single place that the uh, seed fell, which represents the word of God. I'm particularly concentrating on the seed when it fell among thorns. Okay. And the reason I'm concentrating on that today is because at the end of the day, brothers and sisters, there is a lot happening in our lives. And one thing about, I'm, I'm in America, I'm in a country of, of America. So my experience for the most part is in an American societal narrative. I haven't lived in another country. I've visited a couple other countries, but I haven't lived in them. But me being here for these 40 something years, what I, what I see when it comes to the believer, brothers and sisters, when, when Christ told his disciples to not ask, what shall we eat? What shall we wear? And where shall we live? Do you understand the profundity in what Christ put in front of his disciples? Now, everyone on here, I'm going to go for the most part, unless you're an atheist or possibly an Old Testament only kind of person. But if you accept from Genesis to Revelation as the inspired word of God, you more than likely claim to be a disciple, a student of Jesus. You would claim to be a Christian, a Messianic, a Nazarene, whichever one of them titles fits you best. If so, are you claiming to be kind of similar, at least, to the apostles, to the first students? We're generations later. We're a couple millennium later, but we're still using the title as being disciples, the saints, the church. If you call the church, you're claiming to be a student. What things did Jesus command and teach his students that you and I as students today are exonerated from? Yeah, see, that don't apply to us. What Jesus was telling them, that was for them. Now, don't get me wrong. I do believe there are times where Jesus was specifically giving commands and orders to his disciples who are there in his face. But yet there are some things that even the disciples would understand. This is the way of our master. And they would teach this, you know, as they teach. Jesus, the basic need of every human being is food, clothing, and shelter. I'm a father and a husband, and I work very, very hard to do my part to make sure that by all means, pray to God, thank God, ask God for blessing, but I pray and move. So what am I working for? To secure and consistently hold down for my household, food, clothing, and shelter. But Jesus told the disciples, do not take thought saying, so when you with each other, don't let the conversation be about, yo, what we going to eat? What we going to put on? How we going to live? He said for the nations, this is what he said, the Gentiles are consumed with that. Have you ever read that? Let's actually start there. Salute for those of you who are coming in. I see more people coming in and Forgive me if I missed anyone who I, I see my man skill salute was mobbing, bro. God bless you, homie. Thanks for uh, tuning in this evening. Um, hold on for a second. See, I got something here. OK, so. Hold on, everyone. Forgive me. OK. We're getting close. I, I I just heard I just heard an alert. So, oh yeah, praise the Lord. Okay, yep. So I just seen who the salute. Yo, I really appreciate y'all doing this because not everyone who's leaving a donation is necessarily going to get that shirt. You feel what I'm saying? But for those of you who are participating. I've seen the third person reach out. Salute. Thank you. Now, let me uh, continue. Let me go to this text. I'm going to pull this up. Hold on. Let me diminish my young mug. Okay, here we go. 
Okay, let me bring up my Bible. Okay. Boom. Mm. Okay. Okay. Hold on, everyone. So bringing up my text. Okay, here we go. All right, let me share my screen. Okay. Share my screen. Okay. So let me see here. Okay. Look at this, everyone. Matthew chapter six. Let's go to Matthew six. Now look at this. Verse 24, this is Matthew six and 24. It should read similarly in your Bibles, even if you're not using a King James version like myself. No man can serve two masters for either he will hate the one and love the other or else he will hold the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. That is God and material assets. Mammon, people look at mammon as being like a, a idol, like a deity. Christ was talking about the true idol, the, 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 the number one idol that man finds himself serving. It's a choice between God and what you have accumulated in the world. He says, therefore, I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what you shall eat, and what you shall drink, nor yet for your body, what you shall put on, is not the life more than meat and the body than raiment. So then he starts talking about the birds don't work and they're taken care of. Look at this, verse 31. Therefore, take no thought saying, what shall we eat? And what shall we drink? Or wherewithal shall we be clothed? Brothers and sisters, what makes this so profound is that I, Zadok and every single one of you live in a country and in a society built on debt with no control of assets. Most of you, if you're like me, do not control where your food comes from. You don't control the resources that make your clothes. Neither. And if you do got the skill to build a home, you don't probably own the land resource where you can just go and get your own timber and start to build a home on land you own. So we are beholden to jobs and careers. And even if you're an entrepreneur like myself, you still, you might be your own boss, but once you enter into a contract with a client, by default, you make a client your boss until you finish that job. So you're your own boss, but until you complete the agreement between you and a client, that client temporarily becomes your quote unquote employer. So no matter how you spin it, you're looking at others for you to survive in this world. And if you lose a job, look at what COVID has done to people. You lose a job or uh, uh, they cutting back on hours or the whole COVID protocol and people had to be home with their kids. So they had to switch things around, all kinds of stuff. You know what you start to worry about? Are we gonna have enough to eat? Are we gonna have enough to wear? Are we gonna have enough to drink? Where will we live? Can we pay our bills? We are consumed in a society that lives under this current econ economic model. But look at this. Jesus said, for after these things do the Gentile seek. That's the nations. For your heavenly father, nor if you had need of these things. Jesus saying, basically, you're no different from the rest of the world when you worry about them things, because that's all the nations are worried about. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Now, just because you got somewhere to live, what makes you different from the atheists across the street who got more money than you? So don't even let the fact that you eat and that you have somewhere to stay 
necessarily be proof to you of the fulfilling of this. Christ was making a point. What have you really given up in order to gain the kingdom of God? Remember the rich young ruler in Mark chapter 10? Remember when Christ told him what it would take to be with him? He couldn't do that. Let's go now to what I want to get to. Salute for those of you who are popping in. God bless y'all. Okay, where do I want to go? Let's go now over to Matthew 13. Let's go to chapter 13. We started out in chapter six. Let's go over to 13. Matthew chapter 13. And when we get there, I'm only reading a couple of verses. Okay, Matthew 13. And so this is the word being sown, if you're familiar with the parable of the sower. Verse seven says, and some of the seed fell among thorns and the thorns sprung up and choked them. Okay, so whatever grew up from that seed, notice how the seed sprouted up, but it fell among thorns. And when the thorns popped up, it choked whatever had grown. Let's skip down. Verse 22, he also that received seed among the thorns is he that hears the word and the care of this world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word and he become unfruitful. Now, I know that the common idea and thought will be that this isn't referencing you. Because even though uh, you, you might all your life been trying to be wealthy and or rich, you play your numbers trying to hit the big one, you into the big lotto hoping you could get that three, four hundred million, or you hoping you could open a business like myself or get a career that pays a lot of money. I'm not condemning anyone because I'm in the same boat as everyone here. But what I'm saying is we live in a world that's going to test if we truly are the disciples of Jesus Christ. Now, I, we know about the disciples we're reading about. But what Christ says here is very profound. And in this parable, brothers and sisters, those who have heard the word and received it, all of us have received the word. But what's happened in the world where, what's happening in the world where the care of this world, what does it mean to care of this world? Like you ain't supposed to care about people or things. No, it's talking about something deeper than that. And the deceitfulness of riches choke the word. So it's there, but the other things in your mind can choke the word and you become unfruitful, meaning you at one time were fruitful and then you become unfruitful. But y'all know what this also is about? Salvation. So whatever you're doing, whatever I'm doing as a believer, especially in a country like America, where everything is about getting wealthy and, 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 and I can be transparent. I grew up desiring to be a very wealthy man. Now, who knows? I might work hard. I, hey, if I promote a business and I get out here and work hard and it become utterly successful, okay, cool. Now, what am I to do with all of this wealth? That's a whole nother discussion. But at the basic, Americans are, the American dream is not to be kind of okay. The American dream is really to secure wealth. You always hear people talking about generational wealth, generational wealth. I'm not telling you what to do. I'm putting the facts on the table of where we are, where we live, what we've grown up in. We live in a country that, that Solomon warned us through his wisdom, don't be a surety for debt. And we live in a society where it's very difficult to get anything done if you're not willing to establish Debt took for yourself first. How about that? How about that? Yeah, if you tuning in from Facebook, salute, God bless you. I ask that you would consider hitting them thumbs up and them hearts and help the bull. You feel what I'm saying? If you in YouTube, hit that thumbs up. Don't give me the, dump, uh, the thumbs down. Hit the thumbs up. 
and make sure you subscribe to the channel god bless you hold on let me check something right quick because i do for those of you who tuning in and don't know don't mind bringing it up tonight i'm giving away this no matter what the size of the donation big or small i'm giving away this shirt this right here is one of my lines called the blood bought and this right here you see that it, it got it, it looked like a receipt and it, it says that uh this was uh this 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 business transaction was done in ad 33 what was purchased was the church and creation the price was the blood of the lamb and the change you get back is eternal life oh and look who signs the receipt purchaser y'all y'all see purchaser right here yahushua hamashiach <laughs> So I'm giving this joy away, and uh, it's going to the seventh, um, to to the seventh person to give any kind of contribution. I don't care if you contribute; it don't matter. I'm not telling you what the value of the shirt is, so don't be trying to give thinking, "Well, how much do I think the shirt is worth?" Just your giving is greatly appreciated. So this is going to the seventh person, and so far, a salute, brother Bazell. I see you in the building. Salute, King. The seventh person's wait. Hold on. So let me make sure. Let me see what's up. Okay. So, so far. Hmm. Okay. So, so far we got three brethren who have supported so far. God bless you. I appreciate y'all. Yep. We got. Yep. Yes. Oh, no, we got four. We got four people man salute so god god willing that seventh person to get there eventually so with that being the case um and getting back to this we all know that what i'm saying is the truth and on one hand we say we don't care about the flesh but yes we do yes we do so i think that we just need to be very mindful. This isn't a teaching to condemn you for having a job or career or business because I have all of them things myself. This is for us to really sit back and pray to God and meditate and ask God to reveal to us how to protect ourselves. And I'm telling you, a big part of your protection is going to depend on not just your individual ability, but what kind of circle and fellowship are you in where these things are a discussion and are on the table so that the brethren can see, hey, is there a way we can help each other avoid certain things? That's something to consider too. And remember what the apostle said, let not every man think on his own, but also on another's well-being. See, as Christians, one of the answers to how we get things done is it just about you thinking, well, what can I do right for myself? Sometimes the best thing you can do for yourself is see how you can serve others. And in your service, the Lord will open up secrets to you because it is through his service to us that we are to get understanding. Ha ha. That's a young gem. It is through his serving us. He told the disciples, you say you call me master. And that's right. But I didn't come commanding to be worshipped. He said, I came and served. I came and presented myself to y'all as a servant. So do you likewise? Mm, okay. Jesus be on stuff, man. But anyway, let's go. A hey, salute, salute. Aaron C. Otis was good. Excuse me. Oh, and even though I didn't see her name, I see she was commenting the whim. Uh, salute to you, uh, Tia. Yeah. Salute to you. So with that being the case, y'all, let's move on to another version of this same parable. Luke chapter eight. Let's go to Luke eight. If you just joining us, welcome to the dojo. It's your brothers at Ogden in Israel, a.k.a. the God Hop MC. Hashtag just the best of nobody special, a.k.a. Young Chimney. The doors are open. Come in and take them shoes off and make sure your toes right. And start warming up because we already biblical. You heard. So where I say I'm going? Oh, Luke 8. Let's go to Luke chapter 8, brethren. Hold on. Let me go up some more. Okay. Luke chapter 8. And I'm going to go to verse 14. Same parable, but a little bit more meat in the way Luke explains it. Look at this. 
and that which fell among thorns are they which when they have heard go forth and are choked with cares and riches and pleasures of this life and bring no fruit to perfection. So we are to bring forth fruit to perfection, but what will get in the way of the growing process of the word of God, making us more Christ-like? The society we live in. And, and, and this is one thing I wanna say, don't be tricked, man. Be honest with yourselves because I don't mind being honest with you about me. You have been an American you have been raised to think like a capitalist longer than you have been a repentant soul trying to walk in the things of God. So as you reach to be more godly, you still presently in your flesh live in a world that is given. What did Jesus say? The nations are consumed with chasing wealth. And establishing power and establishing dominance and establishing riches and societal status. This is the truth. So don't trick yourself into thinking that you are above possibly being that. When we read the parable of the sower, what, what do we all probably by default put ourselves in the position as? Fruitful, the fruitful ground, fertile soil, and then the uh, 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 some of the uh, seeds fell on, fell on fertile soil. It's just like when Christians go through um, go through afflictions in life. By default, Christians jobify. That's a, that, that's a word I just made up. We jobify ourselves because we see ourselves more like Job, not like some wicked individual who have stepping. And so God whoop on you a little bit. No, when you going through it. It's more like when Satan was coming at Job, God served. A word. Okay. All right. I mean, who, who am I to argue with you about who you are? You understand what I'm saying? But it is what it is. <laughs> so look, let's keep going. What does it say? It says, That which fell among thorns are they which when they have heard, they go forth, but they get choked by the cares and riches and pleasures of this life and bring forth no fruit to perfection. That's for every single individual to consider in their own walk, believe in whoever you think you are. Leah Vasquez, God bless you. God bless you. Thank you for the encouragement. Caterpillar, forgive my sins. That's some good music. You got a great taste in music, my sister. Salute, Bazell. I appreciate it, King. But let's go further. Let's go to the Old Testament now. Let's go to the book of Hosea because a lot of times when you're reading the quote unquote New Testament writings, which People just call the New Testament writings the gospel as if when you're reading the Old Testament writings, you're not reading the gospel. That's a mistake. Let's show you a little shouting. Let's go to the book of Hosea, chapter two. Hosea, chapter two. And I think I'm going to start right, right around the beginning. Hold on. Let me get there right quick. Hosea. Okay. Yeah. Good start right there. All right, everyone. So let's take a look at this. I'm going to make, I'm going to make this a little larger too. Just one tad larger. Okay. Check this out. Say ye unto your brethren, Ami, Ami, and to your sisters, Ruhama, plead with your mother, plead, for she is not my wife. Neither am I her husband. This is God divorcing the nation of Israel. He's divorcing Judah and Israel under the terms of the old covenant. Let her therefore put away her whoredoms out of her sight and her adulteries from between her breasts. This is why a new marriage contract had to be created by God because his wife, the nation, reneged on the first contract. The nation reneged on the first contract. Let's keep going. It says, 
lest I strip her naked. Oh, hold on. Sorry about that. Lest I strip her naked and set her as in the day she was born and make her as a wilderness and set her like a dry land and slay her with thirst. And I will not have mercy upon her children for they be the children of whoredoms. What does that mean? The nation that had God's righteousness through his law and through a, agreement with him, they started to serve other gods and other cultures. And so the, the, the society that was being produced, they were raising generations that didn't look like the righteous nation that God wanted to produce. They looked like they were another man's kids. Y'all see the language of the scripture? God wants you to understand something. And so he uses his, he uses language that man should be able to uh, cognitively uh, uh, digest. Here we go. For their mother played the harlot. She that conceived them have done shamefully. For she said, I will go after my lovers that give me my bread and my water, my wool, my flax, my oil, and my drink. Do See, if you understand the scriptures and how God is talking, if y'all believe this is the word of God, first of all, he's laying it out there for us. God is telling us, brothers and sisters, that the natural resources in the business of a society that produces what it needs, what were the things that this society found itself having but it made a decision to give these things to lovers and not honor the husband. Bread, water, wool, flax, oil, drink. Where does wool come from? It comes from sheep. Where does flax come from? It comes from certain kind of a uh, 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 crop that grows in the field. Oil comes either out of the earth or is talking about the olive oil from the tree. Bread comes from flour, which comes from wheat. Water is a natural thing that is already on the earth that men don't make. God has water on the earth. Do you all see how God provides for all nations, food, clothing, and shelter? And he gave his special nation what all other nations had. But then he said, she took them things and went and cheated. Verse six, therefore, behold, I will hedge up thy way. The path you on, what you're after and what you're doing, I will hedge up your way with thorns and make a wall that she shall not find her paths. And you shall follow and she shall follow after her lovers, but she shall not overtake them and she shall seek them, but shall not find them. Then shall she, shall she say, I will go and return to my first husband for then was it better with me than now. Verse eight, for she did not know that I gave her corn and wine and oil and multiplied her silver and gold, which they prepared for who? Baal. Now, brothers and sisters, I got to say something in case this concept might be foreign to you. When it comes to ser serving other gods, it goes way beyond just some idol statue somewhere. When you serve a God, do you know what comes with that God? Commandments, rules, regulations, a societal narrative that actually le leads to how you're going to live, how you're going to do things, how the society is ran is all in honor of the gods. The nation of Israel, even Christians in their personal lives claim that the way that they live reflects the God they serve. So how is it that the true and living God comes with a culture and a lifestyle you should see, but when you serve another God, that doesn't come with a lifestyle and a culture you should see? Of course it does. And you see how Israel got caught up 
in their wealth, not even giving God his honor. He's saying, yo, they didn't even acknowledge that I'm the one who gave them everything they had, but they took it and wanted to deal with lovers. So because of that, what am I going to put in their way? Thorns. Thorns. Troubles. And you know what them troubles are going to come from? the situations between them and their lovers, because what is it? I'm going to give my lover this. What I produce, do you know the lovers are other nations that serve other gods? In the book of Ezekiel, the Lord said it this way. Instead of him mentioning deities, he said the nation of Israel fell in love with the Babylonians and the Assyrians and liked, liked how they ran their societies and liked how their kings and their wealthy presented themselves. And he said, the nation was like a whore who opened her legs to all that passed by. That language is giving you the idea that God is saying, yo, you want to be like the nations, their culture, their ways. That's what you're after. Christians, especially those of you who live in America, are you more Amer do you look more American to God? Because you could be an American and not serve the Lord at all. Or do when he looks in us, do he see his son reflected in our consciences? Or do he see our consciences overweighed down with what? What shall we eat? What we going to wear? How we going to live? All, this is a genuine question because it's something I'm always looking at myself about. Okay. Thank you, uh, faithful sister and y'all for the donation. Greatly, greatly appreciate that. Hold on for one second, brethren. Just want to look here because I don't want to miss because if I find out who's doing what, I'm actually going to announce it while I'm here on the air. Okay. Hold on for a second. So that was sis. Ah, uh, amen. Okay, the fifth person. The fifth person just uh, show some love. God bless you and thank you so much. That is greatly appreciated because you don't have to do it. I greatly appreciate that. So now we got our fifth person that has given a donation. We got two more people to go. Whoever that second person from now is, God willing, I'll be connecting with you so I can send you this shirt. Amen. I appreciate it. And I appreciate those of you who are giving with no guarantee that you're going to be the one to get it. And, and I know most of you aren't leaving it for that purpose, but it does help move it along to get to that person. So salute. God bless you. I greatly appreciate it. OK, so now let's get to this. Let's go now to what, what text do I want to bring up? Hold on. Oh, let's go there. Let's go to Ezekiel chapter two, because what are these thorns? in these snares really. Okay. It talks about the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches and wealth, but this isn't your, no person is an island. So there has to be a societal narrative that produces this care that you have for wealth and for pursuit of riches and all of this stuff. Right? So let's go to Ezekiel two. Ezekiel chapter two. Okay. And when we get there, let's scroll down. So God is sending, sending Ezekiel. Now the nation of Israel is in captivity. They're in Babylon, right? God is going to reprove them in Babylon. Understand that Jeremiah was during the Babylonian captivity. Jeremiah was prophet and he stayed in the land because Nebuchadnezzar allowed him to stay in the land of Judah. Ezekiel is with the captives in Babylon. So now that you've been put out the land, God is going to bring his word there to reprove you so you can consider. But people hard-headed. So check this out.
And thou, son of man, be not afraid of them, neither be afraid of their words. Though they, though briars and thorns be with thee, and thou dost dwell among scorpions, be not afraid of their words, nor be dismayed at their looks, though they be a rebellious house. Brothers and sisters, do y'all see that the people who don't really want to take in what God is warning and they're against what the prophet is saying, those people themselves are the briars and the thorns. Ezekiel, don't be afraid of what they got to say. Don't be afraid of the way they posture themselves. Though briars and thorns be with thee. So brothers and sisters, just consider this. When Paul in his letter said, he asked the Lord to take away the thorn in his flesh. And the Lord said, let my grace, let, I think it, wait, is it? Let my grace be sufficient for thee or something like that. What was that thorn that kept agonizing Paul? Could it have been particular groups of people? Could it have been certain problems he was having that he found a fight within himself? I'm trying to concentrate on the things of the Lord, but yet there's something else there that keep agging at my flesh, something that's trying to make me unproductive and unfruitful. Could it have been that Paul who chose not to take a salary and live a certain way and he lived on the donations and the help of brethren? Were there times where he may have had need and his flesh could tempt him to think a certain way and Paul hated that and just said, God, take that from me. And the Lord like, no, you good. You can get through that. My grace is sufficient for you. Thank you for uh, properly quoting that, uh, faithful sister. This is not to be dismissed or ignored. Let's go to another prophet in the Old Testament. Let's go to the book of Jeremiah. Let's go over to Jeremiah. I pray that this is edifying. If you're just joining us, salute. If you tap it in through Facebook, thanks for being here. I just ask that you would consider hitting them thumbs up and them like buttons for the kid. Give me them hearts and them thumbs up because they help my algorithm. And if you are in uh, YouTube, um, just give me that thumbs up and be, be sure to not leave without subscribing to the channel. You heard? Okay. So now, what did, what did I say? Oh, Jeremiah chapter 12. And when we get there, I want to start around eight. Look at this. God is talking to the prophet about how the nation has turned out. Mine heritage is unto me as a lion in the forest. It cry out against me. Therefore, I have hated it. My, he's talking about his people. He like, yo, they out of control. They're against me. How is the nation of Israel like a lion roaring against God? by not living according to what he set up to his Torah. They are trying to live after other nations around them, types of culture. And in desiring to be like the other nations, they fall into the trap of giving reverence to the deities of the nations. Because when, put it like this, the Lord told the children of Israel, when you serve me a certain way, the nations are gonna come asking how you doing what you're doing. And then who gets the glory? Yah. So when Israel desires to be like another nation, when they ask other nations how they do stuff, what makes you think them nations didn't give honor to their deity? Hmm. It's, it is our God. Just like the Moabite stone, right? The Moabite stone that, uh, that the king of Moab talks about how he fought against Israel. And when he say he won the battle against Israel on the Moabite stale, they got this in a museum in Britain somewhere, I think. What does he say? Who does he give credit to? His God, Chemosh. But the nation of Israel gives its honor to Yah. A salute, Hashem. <laughs> Hashem said, if I win, give it to the eighth person. All right, bruh. But I'll tell you this. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, hold on. Let me check right quick since you done did that. I didn't expect to see that on the screen. Hold on. Y'all, if y'all want to know why he's saying if I won, give it to the eighth person, it's because that's my brother and we bros like that. So for him, he like, yo, now nah, I don't need it. I'm just supporting. 
Uh, you could give it to the next person after me. Oh, you know what? Hashem, you're the sixth person. So salute, bro. Salute. Thank you for the support. So that's the sixth person. And the next person who leaves a donation will actually be the person to win um, the shirt. I appreciate it, man. Salute. I'm humble. Okay. But anyway, let me get back to this. So with, with this being the case, look at this. Mine. Uh-oh. Okay. Mine heritage is unto me as a speckled bird. The birds round about are against her. Come ye, assemble all the beasts of the field. Come to devour. God is upset and he done for now. Many pastors have destroyed my vineyard. They have trodden my portion underfoot. They have made my pleasant portion a desolate wilderness. I like making this point to my brethren. Who are the pastors here? This isn't somebody at your church on the corner. Pastor here is another word for shepherd because pastor is the, is the Lord over the pasture. The pastors here are the kings and the princes and the priests of the people. How are the kings in them responsible for the destruction of his vineyard? And to my sis, I'm not going to say her name. She know who she is. This is just one of the many texts I'll be trying to put her on to. We know that all men are sinful, so you can say all the nation of sin, but God has a consistent theme through the scriptures where he is putting on blast the leadership of the nation because it is the leadership of the nation that make treaties and political marriages and alliances with other nations. This is how you get, not that someone in your nation couldn't secretly be worshiping an idol. But if your kings and your leadership at the top bring in foreign culture, then guess what? Them the same people that if you did evil and they were right with God and you were bringing idolatry or foreign gods into Israel, what would it, what would they be in charge of? The kings, the priests and the princes would be the judges who would say this person has to be put to death for bringing in false religion, bringing in idolatry and falsehood into the kingdom of Yah. But if your kings in them are the leaders and they're the ones who actually are serving other deities, they're the ones who are responsible for bringing in and it becomes allowable for all society. If the king going to worship a false god, he can't get on a peasant farmer for worshiping a false god. You understand what I'm talking about? You understand? So what happens when the entire society is given to the chase of wealth? Mm. Look, they, who, the pastors, have made it desolate. And being desolate, it mourns unto me. The whole land is made desolate because no man, pardon me, no man lays it to heart. No man. See, once the leadership of the nation has let it go. Now it's like nobody cares. Even if somebody cares, you're not powerful enough to make the nation turn back. The leaders have to. Brothers and sisters, do y'all know that the most high, yo, what, what is Jesus called? I got to come on here now. Let me, let me bring my pretty face. What is Jesus called? Is he not king, governor, ruler? You see who's coming to tell you to reprove the nation and man? It's the king. Who did he come reproving? The leaders of the people. You scribes, Pharisees, hypocrites. Of course, everyone is under sin, but it's a top-down mentality. It's trickle-down gospel economics. You heard me. Oh, you want to be Beyonce and tell me to say your name? Okay, Kylie, there you go. Say your name. You could have just kept quiet and we could have dealt with that personally. But all right, I say your young name. Salute to you, sis. God bless. Get you some rest. <laughs> uh, she says, say my name. I got smoke and a cigar for you. You know, I already keep cigars. It's always smoky, young Smokey Robinson around here. <laughs> so check this out. Where are we at? Oh, here we go. 
what verse? Uh, 12. So, yeah, I want verse 12. The spoilers are come upon all high places through the wilderness. Brothers and sisters, y'all ever heard the term that uh, is quoted by, I think it's Paul who said it, so Christians find ourselves quoting it a lot. Our wrestle is not against flesh and blood, but against spiritual wickedness in high places. Why? What do people think powers and principalities are? And where are the high places? Do you know that the high places are where the leadership, the priesthood, the kings and the prophets in them? You're either serving God in his high place or you're serving other deities in their high places. And it's not just the common man. The common man won't be reproved when the leadership of the land is committing the apostasy too, because then you're a hypocrite. So the Lord said the spoilers are come upon all high places through the wilderness, meaning the first place that God is going to start is where? With the leadership. That's why when you read in another place in Ezekiel, God told Ezekiel, son of man, look at what the nation of Israel do. And you had everyone who was doing evil. Where did he tell the angels to start their killing in Jerusalem? To start at the leaders. He said, start at the elders. Start at the leaders and then work your way down to everyone else. Kill kids and everything. What a baby did wrong. Nothing. But you know what? Once God is fed up, if he going to destroy your nation, you know why he killed the babies off? Because you ain't doing nothing but raising another generation of abomination in his sight. So unfortunately, your children perish because God upset with you. Mm. How about that? That's why if you ever read the Old Testament, you know, sometimes your atheist brothers and sisters out here in the world, they get upset at God and they say God was a narcissist and he was a murderer and committed genocide. Why did he send it? He, he told he gave commands for them to go in and kill women and children. Why would God do that? Why would he kill the innocent? Well, first of all, you're looking at it as a man, not God. God is God. So why did, look, have you ever read the laws of immorality in Leviticus chapter 18, where God talk about homosexuality, then he talk about not sleeping with animals and all of this stuff. He said, don't do like these. He said, the nations who are in this land, who I'm telling you to get rid of, they have done all of these abominations unto their gods, you shall not be like them. So guess what? Have you ever considered that the women were raising children who were going to grow up and, and, and commit bestiality, homosexuality, incest, adultery, fornication, because they were raising the society. They're raising the next generation. The next generation is going to carry on what the generation before it gives it. So that's why Joshua and them, and guess what? It got to the point, because we used to wonder when we were reading the Old Testament, hold on, in some places God would say, just destroy the men in war, fight the men, but take everything else. But then with certain nations, God said, yo, when y'all go in here, burn everything. Don't take silver or gold. He even said, kill even all the animals. Don't leave nothing alive. Why kill the animals either? Have you ever considered the bestiality committed with the animals? Have you ever considered the animal worship? The cow being sacred, being an animal worship? Like you go to India today, any, any of you, I've never been to India. I've watched documentaries. Any of you ever actually been to India? Do you know you could get fined or even put in jail if you kill or hurt a cow because it's a sacred animal? Why is it a sacred animal? Because of one of, because of one of the deities of the people. That's why. See, we don't think like that because remember, there's hardly any idolatry going on today. If you don't see a statue being bowed to, you don't think there's any idolatry. So when I ask people, what gods do the American nation serve? 
because you don't find too many Americans just bowing in front of statues. What do they serve? Mammon is definitely number one. So these thorns and these snares, Christians, are these thorns and snares trying to take you and I down in a country like this one? Everyone thinks, oh, the economics are so great. Look, I, I just don't think people understand. I'm, and once again, this isn't a teaching of condemnation because whatever I'm saying to you, guess what? I'm in the same fight. I got to work and make the same dollar you make. So by no means am I sitting up here as if I've arrived. This is just blunt, honest discussion. What are the thorns and the snares that would choke the word in you and I? And we become unfruitful. Or as it said in Luke 8, you don't bring no fruit to perfection. So guess what? You might see a little bit of fruit, but it's not going to come to its full ripeness. Mm, mm, mm. That's scary to me. And, it, and this is what we should be sober about. What up, Doe? Doe said worship in that red, white, and blue. Hey, I'm probably, you know what I mean? But anyway, where am I at here? Uh, what verse? Did, what's the last verse I read? Oh, check this out. It says, They have sown wheat, but shall reap thorns. They have put themselves to pain, but shall not profit. And they shall be ashamed of your revenues because of the fierce anger of the Lord. Your revenue is basically what the wage you earn, the profit that you get in from doing your business. The business that the children of Israel been doing with the other nations led them to have revenues that they were going to be ashamed of. And where did the spoilers come first? Upon all the high places, through the wilderness. That's attacking the government when a military or a foreign power come and fight your nation. They're not trying to kill your women and your kids per se. They taking out your military and your leaders in government. Cause once they can whoop your army or take control of your leaders, the, the citizens left ain't about to do nothing. You lost. Your army and your government leaders lose, guess what? You lost. So when Paul talks about we don't fight against spirit, uh, flesh and blood, but spiritual wickedness in high places. I want some of you to consider the possibility that the apostle was telling you what we're fighting against. It's not just men doing stuff, but it is the power that is behind what? The aristocracy and the religious elite places of the earth, because it is from there that society takes its cue. That's just the truth. Whoever don't think that's the truth, you go ahead and teach us another way. And, and I'm and, and when and when you go on your platform and do that, make sure you tag me in so I can listen to your presentation because I'm down to listen to it. But I think I'm on to something here. But let's continue to move on. So when a nation says it's a Christian nation, but that nation is consumed with the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches and wealth. That nation will not produce the fruit of God if an individual isn't. But anyway, let's move on. Salute to those of you who are popping in. Hey, what up, Salah Ahmed? Salute, salute. Shalom. Sankofa John, God bless. Salute, salute. Ashley Israel, welcome, sis. Welcome. God bless you. I'm seeing a few people pop in. I didn't salute my brother Sean from earlier. I saw you up in there getting it in. Salute, salute. Great text that Deuteronomy 9. Salute. Thank you. Um, just looking for my last person for the night. Hold on for one second. I just want to be mindful to check the emails and things of that nature. Wow. She is on a roll. Sister Ruthie Harris, wherever you are, just give me a message on the screen because you are... <laughs> the seventh person <laughs> to give a donation tonight. And this is crazy, y'all, because Ruthie, three weeks ago, actually won one of the um, Just a Vessel Nobody special shirts. Sis, did your shirt come yet? You should have it by now. 
hopefully you have your shirt by now that you won. It was you and a sister out in California who had won them two shirts in that last giveaway three weeks ago. And now here you go tonight being the seventh person. Yo, salute to Sister Ruthie. Sis, I already know what address to send your shirt to because I just sent you something within the past week. Wow. God bless you. God bless you. She said, I'm watching. I already have a T-shirt. Okay, Sister Ruthie. Wait, hold on. I already have a T-shirt. Thanks. Okay, you have your shirt. Thank you, sis. Ruthie, you let me know if you want me to forward this shirt that I could send you to another person. If you want me to do that, let me know. And whoever is the next person behind you to give a donation, um, I'll send it to them. So you just email me or either type in on uh, Facebook or whatever and let me know. All right. I, man, salute to Sister Ruthie. <laughs> she bout that. All right, y'all. Forget that break. Um, for those of you who didn't know, I was doing a little giveaway tonight, just thanking people and the seventh person to give a donation tonight won. Um, hold on, let me show because some of y'all weren't here. Um, I have a, a sh I have many shirt lines, but this is one of my merchandise lines. I designed these. This one right here is called it is Blood Bought. And you can see that it's looked like a, a purchase receipt. And it's like Christ purchasing the church with his own blood. And right here on the bottom of the shirt, I don't know if you could see it, but y'all see it says uh, purchaser, Yahushua Hamashiach. So it, it, it's a cute little shirt. And uh, I felt, hey, let me get this away tonight. So, yo, that's what's up. Salute to Sister Ruthie, man. <laughs> I can't believe that, yo. Hi, yo, you're blessed, lady. You're blessed. Okay. All right. OK, so let me get back on track. I got off for a minute. All right. So let me get back on track here now. Uh, where I'm going to take it now, everyone, is let's go over to the book of Proverbs, chapter 22. Proverbs, chapter 22. Hey, if you dig in this tonight, please, I adjure you share this out on your platform. Share the link out. Let people know, hey, something edifying is going on. In the word of God tonight. Bring them in the dojo. Let's see what they warm up cottas look like. All right. So where are we going? We're going to the book of Proverbs, chapter 22. Okay. And when we get there, let's go to verse. Let me see. Check this out. Verse four. By humility and the fear of the Lord are riches and honor and life. So just because you got some wealth don't mean that you can't do God's righteousness. But the apostle warned the wealthy in this world, the dangers in pursuing it. But if you're going to go after it, you just better know what you're getting into. Verse five, thorns and snares are in the way of the fraud. But he that doth keep his soul shall be far from them. Far from what? From the thorns and the snares. How do you keep your soul? Jesus said, what is it for a man to what? Gain the world and lose his soul. I'm telling you, all of these things are together. Amen. Salute, Sister Ashley. I, I'm, I'm, I'm greatly humbled by you believing that I don't teach from emotion, but from the spirit and truth. I, I'm, I'm a man. I got emotions. But if you're not perceiving my emotions in these teachings, then salute. All praise due to the Lord, because I am trying to give God's word. Zadok's word, if it's not at least backed by God's word, it won't help your life, really. Not not to the degree what you're what you might be looking for if, if you're looking for the path of righteousness. But if, if if when put it like this, if I ever do get a little emotional, whatever that emotion is, anger, a little bit prideful, whatever it could be, I pray that it will always be checked <laughs> by the word. <laughs> if it that's that, what is that from? Is that the Scooby Doo joint? If it wasn't for them meddling kids. Oh, man, that's hilarious. 
if it wasn't for them pesky kids. Okay, so since I believe, uh, okay, I believe I got this right, so I'll end it here as far as the other uh, giveaway. Um, Sister Empado, Sister Empado just sent the donation. My sister Ruthie said that she already has a shirt. She was just watching and, and supporting. So, if, so I believe that that's what she's saying to me. So I'm under the impression that uh, the person who I'm going to send this shirt out to, I have an extra large or a medium. So Empado, you let me know what size you want, but look right there at the contact, my Gmail on the ticker. Salute that. No, Leah. Um, Sister Leah, uh, if you want to send, you see right here on this ticker at the bottom of the screen, my cash app is there, but you can also leave something here in the super chat on YouTube, or you can hit my PayPal. You can hit my PayPal as well. Okay. I appreciate that. But Sister Empato, email me. Email me, sis, your information. Let me know if you want the large, I mean, the extra large or the medium, and I'll get this out to you as soon as possible. Congratulations, sis, and thank you for your support. I really, really, really appreciate it. And here come Alejandro. That's what's up. Salute to you. God bless you. Oh, okay, sis. <laughs> Ashley said, oh, I know emotions are there. That's what's up. I, hey, man, I'm humbled by y'all. Okay, let me get back to this. Wow. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, y'all. So let me let me uh, bring up this text. So getting back and finishing off my thought in Proverbs, thorns and snares are in the way of the forward, but he that keeps his soul shall be far from them. Jesus told us, what is it for a man to gain the world and lose his soul? What is gaining the world? And how do you lose your soul if you gain the world? So what does it take to even strive to gain the world? And what danger is it to your soul? If you're going to maintain your soul, thorns and snares will be far from you. I'm not telling you what to do. I don't even know how y'all taking all this stuff that I'm saying but it need to be said, amen? Because this is, this is the word of God. This is the good news. It's good news to know how to avoid thorns and snares. If you keep your soul, then isn't that salvific? The keeping of your soul, protecting yourself. Hmm. All right, let's keep going. We got a little more here, y'all. Pray that this is edifying. Let me see. I got what, what, one, two, three. I got four texts left. Let's go to 2 Samuel chapter 23. Y'all see how these this Old Testament is so, it's so abundant with judgment and righteousness and commandments and statutes for us to live by. When you look at the so-called Old Testament writings and you pair them up with the New Testament writings, if the Holy Spirit grants us the ability to understand what's in front of us, we can really become fruitful and bring forth that fruit to perfection that was spoken of. Okay, so let's go to 2 Samuel chapter 23. All right. Oh, hold on. Nope, here. Okay. 23. Okay. And when we get there, I'm going to start at verse one. What lesson can we learn from the book of the prophet Samuel? So let's look at this about David here. Now, these be the last words of David. David, the son of Jesse said, and the man who was raised up on high, the anointed of the God of Jacob and the sweet psalmist of Israel. All right, all right, with the platitudes. Dang. <laughs> Here we go. The spirit of the Lord spake by me and his word was in my tongue. The God of Israel said, the rock of Israel spake to me. He that ruleth over men must be just, ruling in the fear of God. 
Why is this important? Because those who will rule over men are like shepherds that guide sheep. Here we go. Sister Impardo, make sure that you send me that email. You may have already sent it. I, I just want to make sure that I remind you. Um, look on the ticker there for my email address and make sure you sent it. And I think I see. Okay, sis, I got you. I got you. Thank you so much again. Okay, so here we go. And he shall be as the light of the morning when the sun riseth, even a morning without clouds, as the tender grass springing out of the earth by clear shining after rain. Wow. Okay. Although my house be not so with God. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Even though. Now he's saying this, and this is where my hope and your hope as believers what did Christ come to do but to bring us to sure mercies of David? Is that not what the scriptures say? Okay, look at the mercy David understood. So although my house be not so with God, so David is understanding that when you are just, when you are after righteousness, even if presently your family, your household, whatever, isn't 100% the way God would want it? That's what David's saying here. Do y'all know when David was writing this, his home was in turmoil? He got sons who fight and they're trying to take the kingdom from each other. All of that. Understand the context. Although my house be not so with God, yet he hath made with me an everlasting covenant. Brothers and sisters, even if everything in our life isn't 100% the way we know it should be, if we belong to the Lord, he has made a promise with us. We just have to remain faithful, ordered in all things and sure for this, all my salvation and all my desire, although he make it not to grow. So even though I don't see it fully manifested in front of me, I have faith in this. Even though we know we fall short of the glory of God, how many of us are still walking in this faith. Mm, mm, mm. But the sons of Belial, do y'all know that in Hebrew, the word of Belial just means like a worthless one? Look at this. But the sons of Belial shall be all of them as thorns thrust away because they cannot be taken with hands. You can't touch thorns with hands. If they'll crush your hands, it'll prick you. So he's saying, basically, God will eventually get rid of the wicked. We don't want to be Belial. But the man that shall touch them must be fenced with iron and the staff of a spear and they shall be utterly burnt with fire in the same place. Woo! If you're going to fight against the thorns, if you're going to fight against the unrighteousness around you, first of all, you better make sure you are armored up with what? Iron and a staff of a spear. Then you can poke at the thorns that are in your way. Ephesians 6, remind you of that? Put on the full armor of God, brothers and sisters. Mm. Interesting. Interesting. Yo, if you're coming in late, we've been getting it in. It is what it is. All right, here we go. What's the next text I want? We got two left after this one. Let's go to the book of Numbers. How are we preaching the gospel? and the sound doctrine that a Christian should live by out of the Old Testament writings. I on purpose am showing you that the fullness of the scripture is what we need to learn. It's what we need because God gave it to us. <laughs> hear the Bible, hear the full word of God and not just get stuck in the apostles letters. The apostles are our brothers in the faith, and they are teachers, but they're not the only teachers. Here we go. And, and, and oh, 
when the scripture says that the church is built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, some Orthodox Christian try to tell me that was talking about prophets in the New Testament church. Man, get that mess out of here. Get that crap out of here. That is not what that meant. That is not what that meant. Oh my God. You mean to tell me that the church is not built on the foundation established by Ezekiel, Jeremiah, Daniel, Isaiah? Come on. Come on, people. But hey, that's how they see it. I can't agree with that. Would never agree with that. But anyway, let's keep it moving. I said Numbers chapter 33. In my whole presentation tonight, I only used three or four New Testament scriptures. 75% of my teaching tonight was presented through the Old Testament writings to prove a point. All right, so let's go here. Uh, Numbers 33. So let's see what kind of wisdom was being given in the young wilderness coming out of Kemet. Um, numbers 33. Here we go. Numbers chapter 33, and I'm going to go all the way down to around verse 50. Here we go. Numbers 33, starting at verse 50. And Yah spake unto Moses in the plains of Moab by Jordan near Jericho, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel and say unto them, When ye are passed over Jordan into the land of Canaan, then you shall drive out all the inhabitants of the land from before you and destroy all their pictures and destroy all their molten images and quite pluck down all their high places. So once again, and I know some Christians don't like to hear this. Christians, be very careful that as you claim to walk in the liberty of Christ, that you're not keeping up the pictures and the images of paganism inside the body of Christ. I'm just going to warn you. I'm just going to warn you. And that's out of love, sincere love. That's an emotion right there, Sister Ashley. And that's the emotion of love. All right, <laughs> here we go. Verse 53, and you shall dispossess the inhabitants of the land and dwell therein, for I have given you the land to possess it. And you shall divide it by lot for an inheritance among your families. And to the more you shall give more inheritance and to the fewer you shall give the less inheritance. Every man's inheritance shall be in the place where his lot falls, according to the tribes of your fathers. But if you will not drive out the inhabitants of the land from before you, then it shall come to pass that those which you let remain of them shall be pricks in your eyes and thorns in your sides and shall vex you in the land wherein you dwell. Moreover, it shall come to pass that I shall do unto you as I thought to do unto them. Hmm. Christians claim we serve the same God. I know we under the, some people say we in the dispensation of grace and all of that. That's what's up. That's what's good. If you don't get rid of from the church the things that ought not be in it, do you know what them things are going to be to the church? Pricks in the eyes and thorns in the sides. And we will be vexed as the believers in Christ because while we claim to be this holy set apart people, the constant culture and the true thing that the society that we grew up in worships and serves and chases and is consumed with, we're going to prove that we're just like them and we're not really set apart in this, from the society. What that means, it gets deeper than what I'm saying here, but I think it's at least a framework to start to consider from. And that's just the truth of the matter. At least the truth of the matter in the limited way that I can see it. 
All right, we got two more texts left. Where are we going now? Joshua 23. So if this is what was said in Numbers, then let's look at how it went with Joshua, because Joshua was the one in charge of having to do this. Joshua 23. Okay. As we get there, I'm going to start reading at verse 11. Joshua 23 and 11. Take good heed, therefore, unto yourselves that you love the Lord your God. Else, if you do in any wise go back and cleave unto the remnant of these nations, even these that remain among you and shall make marriages with them and go in unto them and they to you, know for a certainty that the Lord your God will no more drive out any of those nations from before you, but they shall be snares and traps unto you and scourges in your sides and thorns in your eyes until you perish from off this good land which the Lord your God have given you. And do y'all know how that manifested for the children of Israel? It showed up in them adopting the culture, i.e. the gods of the nations around them. That's just the truth of the matter. And you start to mix Yahweh culture with some of the customs and the ways of the nations around you and you think you still serving him. Christians, the thorns and the snares, what will make us unfruitful in the church where we don't bring forth fruit to perfection? Mm. Mm. That's interesting. Josh says most people have yet to be convicted by God, so they don't even understand what the fear of God really means. Yeah, that's true. But as I look at this timeline of people, who in here are going to say they have been convicted by God and who's going to say they haven't? So since we can't point nobody out, Brother Josh, let every individual look within themselves at the message. Yahukana, salute, salute. God bless you, King. Sister Ashley, I'm just trying to, I, I'm just trying to speak the truth. I'm just trying to speak the truth. And I pray that it convicts us and edifies us, that it pricks us even more unto salvation. Hallelujah. Let's go to our last text. Let's take it now back into the New Testament. Our last text for the night. Salute to the entire room. Thank you all for bearing with me tonight. I've been running my mouth for almost two hours and you all haven't dipped off. So I really appreciate that. Uh, God is good all the time. And y'all know the rest. <laughs> hold on for a second. Where is it? Okay, hold on. My, hold on, my plug came out. Can't let my. Okay, there we go. So, Hebrews chapter six. So let's see if the message changes because now Jesus has come. You know, it's a whole new thing. We now we under the law of Christ. Okay, that's what's up. I can dig the law of Christ. I'm going to say, if you think that Christ is Yahweh the Son and that he was the God in the Old Testament, then didn't Yahweh the, didn't Yahweh the Son give the law? Yahweh the Son gave the law, right? Okay. So when he was manifested in the flesh, you're telling me he just changed all his law? If your Christology holds up with, pre, with Christ pre-incarnate being the God of the Old Testament. But... I ain't going to go that deep. I'm going to keep it young, simple with the with this last text for the night. <laughs> Hebrews chapter six. And when we get to Hebrews six, we're going to start at verse one. Let's see how this goes. Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on unto perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and faith toward God, of the doctrine of baptisms and of laying on of hands and of the resurrection of the dead and of eternal judgment. 
once all of this is put, put on the table and we are supposed to understand, we don't have we're not to go backwards and have to relearn all of that. We are supposed to be going on to perfection. And this we will do if God permit. That if is a big one. For it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted of the heavenly gifts and were made partakers of the Holy Ghost and have tasted of the good word of God and the powers of the world to come. If they shall fall away to renew them again unto repentance, seeing they crucified it themselves, the son of God afresh and put him to an open shame. For the earth which drink in the rain that comes oft upon it and bring forth herbs meet for them by whom it is dressed, receiveth blessing from God. But that which bear thorns and briars is rejected and is nigh unto cursing, whose end is to be burned. But beloved, we are persuaded. So that persuasion is, it, it, this is a thing of hope. This is a thing of hope. There's hope. But you better work. You better work. So whoever want to think I'm, oh, you're preaching a works-based salvation. Well, whatever you want to call it, you better work. You heard. But beloved, we are persuaded better things of you, and things that accompany salvation. Though we speak thus, for God is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love, which ye have showed toward his name in that you have ministered to the saints and do minister. And we desire that every one of you do show the same diligence to the full assurance of hope unto the end. So that because this is the apostles hope don't mean that everyone is going to show that same diligence. that ye be not slothful, but followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promises. So you mean the, a promise, the promises aren't automatically inherited because you got baptized and came out of the water? No, some people will grow lazy, but follow them who through faith and patience inherit the promises. This is when Christ said, those who endure till the end, the same shall be saved. You got to endure till the end, brothers and sisters. You and I, if we got any hope in this thing, the thorns and the snares, we got to look within ourselves. What are we chasing? Are we so American that we're constantly consumed with how much we got in the bank? Y'all, it's not eat. Yo, I got my bank app on my phone. It's easy for me to just, I, did my money change from two days ago? I don't know. Hold on. Let me check my savings. Let me check my check. And it's right on my phone. Just And I got a couple of accounts. <laughs> so I'm not here to condemn anyone, but I want the word of God to convict you. I want it, I need it to convict me so I can stay on point because living in the kind of times we live in and the kind of society we're in, you're on TV. Hey, this is the greatest country in the history of civilization. We're the wealthiest ever. I, yo, I watched the debate on capitalism and socialism and all of this. And do you know what the capitalists argue? One of the cap, one of the people on the capitalist side of the argument is the guy who he was one of the co-founders of Whole Foods. He sold Whole Foods now, but he's one of the founders. You know what their argument was? The reason why capitalism was the greatest because it produced the most riches in the history of civilization. No other civilization in history can claim to have made more people wealthy and rich. I'm just going to leave that there. However you take that, however you understand that, that's what that is. You and I live in a capitalist society and are pushed every day to desire the greatest wealth. And it's something that we have to fight. I didn't even get into Paul's letter to Timothy talking about 
let those who will be rich in this world, don't let them be high minded, but let them fear for those who will be rich, bring upon themselves many foolish and hurtful lusts. I mean, look, hey, it is what it is. See, I could have went super, super somewhere with this, but I just wanted to put something on the table for you and I to consider. For you and I to consider. Amen. So look, y'all, that's my presentation for tonight. I pray that you have gotten something from it that will just, if you don't know the Lord, spark something in you to get to know our God. If you fear God for real, for real, then just sit back and consider. Sit back and consider what was said tonight because before I presented it to you, I had to study it myself. So remember, anything I say to you is also to me. Because how dare I come on and put all this together just so I can give you a word. Well, the word came to me first in order to deliver it. Amen. So a salute. Thank you all for participating. Thank especially those of you who did participate in the little, I, I guess you could call it a kind of raffle kind of thing that I did tonight. Uh, salute to Sister Amparo, Sister Ruthie, <clears throat> pardon me, could have took it, but she got something a few weeks ago. So she was like, hey, bro, I already got a shirt. I'm good. So salute to her. And she still gave a donation. And Sister Amparo gave a donation and wind up being the one this goes to. So salute to y'all. God bless y'all. Amen. And uh, we serve the true living God. And this is that living word, brothers and sisters. So I'm going to say good night to y'all and God bless y'all. Thank y'all. Until next time. Salute.